are so excited that you decided to come in and worship with us today. So I want for you, wherever you are at, jump to your feet, put your hands together, and let's worship the Lord. Scripture says, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So let's lift up the name of Jesus today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. Be lifted high. You say, Jesus, we lift your name on high. Your name on high. Be lifted high. Jesus, we lift your name. Jesus, we lift your name on high. That great name. Your name on high. Be lifted high.
his love for us is unstoppable. He is chasing us down this morning. He's pursuing us with the reckless abandonment. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus.
shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable. We'll shout your praise forevermore. Jesus, our God's unstoppable. Sing. Nothing shall be on, impossible. Church. Open your up your mouth and lift your heart. Declare we'll this to us in the earth. Oh, 
lift our hands and receive the Spirit of God into our hearts and into this place.
It's that time again. Launch and Ascend is just around the corner, and we need your help to make this event run smooth. We need volunteers for ushers, aisle workers, shuttle drivers, and parking lot workers. To lend us a couple of hands, please contact the events department at events at lifecenter.org. Good morning, everyone. I'm Apostle Don Wells. I'm so grateful that you were able to tune in this morning. And maybe it's afternoon or evening. Maybe you're watching this after Christmas. But uh, this is designed for Sunday, Christmas Eve. Hopefully, you're watching this and you're gathered around with family and friends. You've got a little bit of coffee and a fire and some warmth. But I want to take a few minutes and encourage your heart and talk to you just about the joy of the Lord because I believe it's a very important subject. We're usually more mindful of it this time of year. We see things with joy and joyful on them, and uh, it, it really reminds us of the power of His joy. And I want to talk a little bit about that this morning. But, you know, it's, it's good during this season to remind ourselves of really the gift that Jesus was. And You know, I was thinking the other day, every major religion takes time to show how to get to God. If you think about whatever religion it is, the purpose of it is to show you how to get to God and what you have to do. And as a subscriber to that particular religion, maybe you have to pray, you have to fast, you have certain disciplines that are required of you to get closer to God. The amazing thing about Jesus was that that was God's answer to mankind. He said, you don't have to get to me. I'm going to send Jesus to you. That's the way to get to me is through Jesus, to accept the work that he did. And Christianity is distinguished by the coming of Jesus. He's our Savior. I don't have to work to get to God. I don't have to do certain things. I just accept the gift that Jesus Christ is as my Savior, as God's Son. That's a great thing to celebrate, to remind ourselves this time of year because many times you can get caught up in the disciplines and it's good to have those. We're a big proponent of them. But you know, it was, there was nothing I could do. God just sent His Son as a way of saying, you can't get to me by your good works. That was the entire Old Testament summed up. You can try, you can do all of these things, you can hold to the letter of the law, but you can't get there through your good works. And so He sent His Son as an act of grace and mercy and love and kindness to us so that we could accept Him. And that's what this season reminds us of. That's what really gives us our, our, our joy is that God was saying, hey, I'm going to reach you. You don't have to reach me. Isn't that great news? Isn't it a wonderful celebration to be able to do that? And that's really what joy is. I want to talk just a moment before I jump into a scripture here in Nehemiah about joy versus happiness. Because many times people ask, you know, what's the difference between joy and, and happiness? And many times joy can be translated as happiness, but the true root of joy is something very different. Happiness is a great quality. Many times you'll hear people say, well, you know, happiness, joy, they're not at odds with each other. They're just different. Happiness is really derived from external circumstances. It's a great feeling. It's something that you have happened to you. Maybe your job, uh, you get a promotion. Well, that makes me happy. Maybe you get a new car. Maybe you find a new relationship. It's usually driven by external things that bring a sense of feeling of, of euphoric happiness in that moment. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's, it's a good thing. It's, we enjoy happiness, the happiness of the season many times. and All of these different things that can bring that, but they're external. And that sense of feeling is usually um, short-lived. It lasts for a while, and then we have to look for something else. So if we live our life just by happiness, then we're always looking at circumstances around us to fulfill us. And that becomes the danger. There's nothing wrong with happiness if I understand that's not the driving force. Joy, on the other hand, is an internal inside job. It's something that God gave us. It gives us the ability to walk out our life regardless of the circumstance around us, whether they're good or whether they're bad. And we're going to just look at a couple of passages today to remind ourselves because joy is not something that you say, I want more joy. It's really understanding what it is and where it comes from. It's an inside job, an internal force that God gives us to carry us and sustain us 
through life. It has a very important role in the life of a believer. If, if the enemy can steal your joy, he can take your goods, he can steal things from you, he can really wreck your life. So joy is something you have to guard and you have to protect and you have to keep. If you don't, then things become very challenging. So I want to go to Nehemiah chapter 8 this morning and start in verse 10. I want to give a little backfill to this story so that we can talk about what it means and where it comes from. The children of Israel had just come out of exile. And Nehemiah, the governor, was setting things up. They were rebuilding things and putting things back in order and restoring. And Ezra, the priest, was present. And what, what they were doing is they had taken the Word of God, they had found it, and they started reading it. And as they started reading the Word of God, the people started crying and mourning and wailing because they realized that their lifestyle was very different and far away from the Word of God. Now, I don't know if you've ever been there. I've been there in my life. At times, you walk through things and you go, you know, I, I read something in Scripture many times. And I go, this is, this is bad. I'm not doing this. I'm not where I need to be with this. And there's a conviction. And that conviction can really overwhelm you if you're not careful. You can feel just, I'm not able, I'm not capable, I can't do this. I'm, I'm just not able to live this life that Scripture upholds. In the midst of this, Nehemiah stops and he says, listen, this is, this is verse 10, chapter 8 of the book of Nehemiah. They're mourning, they're crying, they're saying, we're not doing this. And Nehemiah said to them, go your way, eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to those whom nothing is prepared, for this day is holy to our Lord. Do not sorrow, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. Now, I would suspect you would, you would do the opposite, and I'm afraid probably many preachers would do that. We'd say, yeah, you're not living the Word of God. But that's not the way that Nehemiah, that's not the way that God responds to us. He did not respond with browbeating and you're not living up to the Word of God. He responded with kindness and he said, listen, Go, go enjoy these things because the joy of the Lord is your strength. Well, what does that mean? What, what does it mean? The word simcha for, for joy in Hebrew is translated joy, happiness. It's, it's, it, it gives us an understanding that there's this, this force, but we have to really look at the Scripture and we have to get the, the, the understanding from Scripture to fully understand what the impact of joy is in our life. And Nehemiah says, listen, guys, I know you feel like you're far away from the Lord. I know you feel like you're in this tragedy, like you're not living this, but the joy of the Lord is your strength. What is this joy? I think the way that we have to understand joy is joy is a perspective. It's a, it's a way of, of, of looking at things. It's a viewpoint. That's really what joy is. And we're going to see that as it plays out in a couple of places here in a moment. Because when you have the right perspective, it becomes a sustaining force. It's not, it's not, many times people think joy is the absence of sadness. It's not the absence of sadness. It's not the presence of this spectacular things happening. It's a force that we get on the inside of us from having the perspective or the viewpoint of the Lord. Now, there's probably no better place to go than Hebrews chapter 12 to see this story played out. This is, this is really one of my favorite passages because as we begin to unfold it and we unpack it, we find some tremendous life application, meaning this is where I live. This is in the trenches, the real life. This is, this is where things happen. And the writer here says, looking unto Jesus, that's always a good thing, right? Always a good thing. Looking unto Jesus. Here's our example. The author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy who was set before him. So this joy was set before him. Why? Before him to endure the cross, despising the shame, and set down at the right hand of God. So think about this for a moment. Jesus is facing the cross. He's facing a very difficult time in his life. It's, it's, a, it's, it's not something that he's excited about. He's not going, hey, I get to go to the cross. This is wonderful. But what he understands is this, that if I'm going to, if, if I'm going to live out the joy that is set before me, and if I'm going to endure this cross, this hardship, this this season of difficulty, this shame that's coming towards me, I'm going to have to do it with the perspective of the Lord. Now that goes a long way when we understand sometimes we go through very, very difficult things. 
and we go through challenges in our life that we don't understand stuff. It's, it's not like, it, this is what I really want you to hear this morning. It's not that Jesus looked at this event and said, I'm finding joy in this event. He didn't find joy in the event of the crucifixion. God did not suspend the laws of pain and suffering. Those nails went in His hands and His feet. That was painful to endure and set upon that cross. And if you've ever studied the crucifixion, it was a horrific way to die. It was painful. It was slow. He had to endure that. But He didn't, he didn't find joy in the event. He found joy in the guaranteed outcome of that event that he knew God's plan would prevail. Now, see, that gives me hope. That gives me joy, excitement when I think about walking through a hardship, when I go through something that's difficult in my life, whether it's marriage or finances or on the job or community or church, whatever it is. I don't have to go, I'm going to be excited about this. I'm really excited about walking through this. It's that I say, I will take the perspective of the Lord, and I know that there is a guaranteed outcome of good for me in this. That's the perspective of the Lord. That's what our joy is. It's the perspective of, I know God's got me through this. I know it's difficult. I know it's challenging and hard to walk through. And, you know, one thing we share as human beings is we all walk through hardships and challenges. Nobody's exempt from that. Jesus told us you're going to have those hardships in this world. But did you know the distinguishing factor of a Christian, of a believer in Christ, is our joy? that we have this joy, that I don't have to be down in the mouth and say, this is terrible and it's hardship, it's difficult, and I don't understand this, and why am I going through this? I can have the perspective of the Lord, that there is a guaranteed outcome of good, that God will turn it to good if I just maintain my integrity and walk through this. That reminds me of, of, of that passage right next door here in James, where James says, brethren, Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Sometimes that confuses believers because they go, I, I, I'm supposed to be excited about this trial? And we could, we could translate that word trial or tri tribulation from the Greek. It, it, it's both. There's, it means various trials and temptations. So he said, when you count it all joy, when you walk through these trials, these tribulations, these difficult things and the temptations of the world, and when you walk through them, count it all joy. How do I count that as a joy? How do I get excited about being, feeling like I'm being beat up? That's not where the joy comes from. The joy is set before us that I trust God has an outcome. And James gives us how that works. He said, if, if we do that, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, and let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect, complete, lacking nothing. So as we allow joy to to be a sustaining force. We, we choose to take the perspective of God. I'm not going to look at this temporal moment, the moment that I'm in, this suffering, because I trust and believe that God has a guaranteed outcome of good. I may not see it. I may not understand it. But my joy is the sustaining force. It's different than my happiness. That may come back when I have a good circumstance. But while it's difficult and it's challenging, the Bible gives us great hope in that our joy is the perspective of God that He's going to take care of us. That no matter how difficult, no matter how challenging, I know that I can keep my joy. I can keep my perspective. I can keep my viewpoint that God has a guaranteed good outcome and ending for me. Now, that's hope. That's what keeps us alive, keeps us in our walk, keeps us strong. And if we guard that, if we don't let the world or anything talk us out of that, we can always trust that God is going to get us through, that His Word is going to stand in our lives as we walk it out. I may not understand everything. I may not get a hold of everything. But I don't find joy in the trial itself. It's difficult. It's hard. But it's what it produces. You know, m many times, many, many people I, I know ask me about, I, I cold plunge, and I'm a big cold plunge fan, and it's a miserable experience. And people go, why do you do it? It, it reminds me of this very thing. Why, why would you go sit in cold water? Well, because of the health benefit, the outcome. Do I like sitting in it? No. Nope. Do I like going and getting in cold water? And No, absolutely not. But it's just like a trial. While I'm in it, it's difficult. I have to mentally remind myself that the outcome of this is producing something good in my body. It's the same way when we talk about 
joy and holding on to our joy walking through that trial. It's, joy is not a product of what people think about you or the circumstance or the outside. It's about, I trust God that in this difficult time, while I'm sitting in this difficult trial, this cold, hard, dark place that maybe nobody else can understand, I trust that God has a guaranteed good outcome. And that viewpoint is what my joy is. It's what it holds to. That's what this season reminds us of. Joy. Yes, we have hard times. Many times, many times uh, Christmas is a difficult season. For many people, the, the suicide rate goes up. You hear these horrific statistics. Why? Because of that pressure. That's why we have to stop sometimes and remind ourselves through this difficult time. I trust you, Father. I trust that you're walking me out of this, that there will be a guaranteed, a guaranteed outcome that will be for my good, and it will produce things in me that will please you. I trust you. And that's what joy is. It's choosing to trust the perspective of God, that He knows what He's doing. So I hope this holiday season, you've had some wonderful time with your family and friends and you've gathered around. But I, I also hope that no matter what you're walking through, no matter how challenging and how difficult the circumstance may be, that you stop and remind yourself that it is His joy, His gift that is our strength. You cannot get this strength from outside sources. You can't get it from anything other than joy. The joy of the Lord, the perspective of the Lord, the trust of the Lord that He's going to deliver me out of this. That is my strength. That is my sustaining force. And no matter how bad the circumstance may look now, I'm going to hold on to that joy and strength. I trust that you'll do that during this holiday season. I hope you'll take time and work on this a little bit more and develop this because joy is a very important part of our life. I hope you'll stop, get the perspective of the Lord if you're walking through something difficult because He loves you and He cares for you. And He is going to make sure that your outcome is great. He's going to make sure that anything that came against you is going to be better. And it's going to produce something that is going to please Him in that. I hope this blesses you this morning. I hope that the joy of the Lord will continue to be your strength for all of your life. That you'll guard it and protect it. Because it is a sustaining force that will help you to grow in the things of God. I pray right now in Jesus' name. The blessing of the Father be upon every household, every man, woman, child, every person watching this. That through the challenges and the difficult temptations and things that you've walked through, that you will find the joy of the Lord. That you will find a new perspective on the outcome of what God is doing in your life. And whether it was God sent or not, it'll still be God used. He'll use anything the enemy would bring against you. And it is that joy, that perspective, that viewpoint that is going to strengthen you. So I pray the blessing of God on you today, and I pray that in all that you do, there's a new joy and a strength in your life. God bless you.